fundamentals behind the design of wood structures. First of all, uh, let me give you a, an idea of the learning objectives associated with this, and we will be looking at the design of wood columns, posts, beams, joists, rafters, really to familiarize those that maybe have are new to wood engineering and are unfamiliar with the material as a structural material. And those that are somewhat familiar, hopefully I'll have some insights and some hints that maybe will be new to you as well. What's unique about the material is there's many adjustments factors associated with the stresses that apply to both beams and columns. And so that will be a, a fundamental focus that I will be also looking at. And then we'll have a very brief introduction to wood connectors and the types of failure modes that they might have that you need to design for. And also a very brief introduction just to give you a sense of some of what wood diaphragms and shear walls involve um, for those that are looking at higher wind or seismic areas. But the bulk of what I will be talking about and our focus is really in the first two items. And uh, we'll be following something that is uh, sold by um, SKGA, the code master for the structural wood products that they have. And uh, this is not necessarily a shameless plug, but I actually am the one that authored this. And um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's $17, and it's a three-folded or six-page uh, laminate. Uh, and I get no money, but if you, uh, I don't get any royalties if you go out and buy a lot of these. I simply um, like doing this uh, for my own students. And after having to deal with sometimes what seems to be an illogical layout in the NDS, which is the wood design code. I kept making these, um, these helpful cheat sheets that I used for the design of my wood structures and brought that into the classroom. And it seemed to be a good marriage with what um, SKGA was doing with their Codemaster series. And so the, the latest one has been updated here. And it, it has ASD and LRFD and its design of rectangular beams and columns. Sawn lumber and glue laminated beams are all incorporated into it with considerations for deflection, duration of load, what moisture can do to the wood, temperature, uh, stability issues, size and volume effects, uh, incising factors, repetitive use, even curved glue laminated beams, what is involved there, um, bearing capacities, and uh, combining axial and bending forces. So it's, it is fairly complete as far as rectangular beams and columns with sawn lumber and glue lamps. And there's also yellow portions that are called the secret of Codemaster. And in there, there are special hints from those that have uh, basically do lots of wood buildings about things that maybe someone that's new to wood framing might like to hear up front. It is based uh, currently uh, uh, IBC 2018. And that's what the current Codemaster is designed after is uh, with its underlying standards of the ASCE 716 and the 2018 NDS. And the 2018 NDS is the wood design portion for the industry, for engineers. It's the national design specification. And there's also a commentary that comes with it as well. When you look at the 2018 NDS, there's a couple other underlying publications as well. There's the 2018 NDS supplement. And in there, we have the reference design stresses for a number of different types of wood species. So if you have, whether it's Douglas fir or oak or pine or different kinds of pine, you can find reference design values of all those species in there. Also, there's the 2015 special design provisions for wind and seismic, which was not updated in this last three-year cycle of the NDS. It's typically updated maybe every other cycle. And it's, those provisions still remain in effect as they um, have um, over the last uh, six years or, or three years. If we look further at where wood is as a structural material across the US, it's interesting to note that 80 to 90 percent of all structures in the US have wood frame in them. So it's extremely common. And in fact, geographically, if you look at Los Angeles County out here on the West Coast, 96% of all buildings have wood framing in them. 
but not necessarily West Coast, but if you go, uh, say, Memphis as just a random example, 89% of all buildings in Memphis are wood construction. And if you look at residential, the numbers get much higher. In fact, in California out here, 99% of all residences is wood frame construction. So it's extremely common, yet of all the building materials, it is probably the least taught in university education. In fact, only maybe a 50% of engineering programs in civil or structural architectural engineering even offer a course in wood frame uh, as, a, as a structural material. And of those that offer it, it is typically an elective or they're not offering it on a regular basis. So we find that generally the engineering profession lacks a lot of education in wood frame construction despite being very, very common. 